start that thing. Uh, in the last two weeks, we shared messages on contentment, two weeks ago, and last week we shared a message on hope. And today, I want to share a message that goes right along. The next, the, the next step would be faith, okay? So I want, I want to talk about faith, but I want to, uh, faith is such a broad subject, so I, I want to pick this topic of faith, but I want to talk about the two results of faith, okay? We'll, we'll look at faith from a little bit different angle because it's a broad subject and it, it's something that we, things we need to learn from the Word of God to help us grow in the Lord, to help us uh, believe because our believing has got to be based on what God said. A lot of people are basing belief on what they heard, what somebody thought. I've had people tell me the most crazy things uh, about the Bible uh, they thought was in the Bible. I said, well, can you show me where that is? And they can't. Just recently somebody did that with me. They did. They shared about something. I said, well, they mentioned the book in the Bible. I said, well, I'm familiar with that book. I've never read that. Can you tell me what that is? Well, uh, they couldn't tell me where that was. What the, they couldn't back up uh, the statement they were making. And, and there's a lot of that that goes on. So faith is such a broad subject. So we want you to be aware of this, this particular area in faith. There are two results of faith. Let me start by, by quoting uh, uh, our script, or our, our foundational text here. I'll be reading today from the book of Hebrews. And uh, chapter 11, many people call it the uh, Hall of Faith. You, we've all heard of the Hall of Fame. And then they call this, uh, this chapter, I thought it was very well named, the Hall of Faith. So, let's read verse 1. gives us a definition here. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is, the Bible says, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, we could go into that verse and dissect the words and everything, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just give you a general uh, view of what this is saying to you and to me today as believers. This is saying that exercising faith in God and His Word, exercising faith in God and His Word is necessary for answered prayer and deliverance. Okay, if we have a petition, uh, if we bring it before God, uh, we, have, we have to exercise faith in God and His Word. If we expect that prayer to be answered, if we expect, expect to get deliverance from whatever is uh, coming against us, God requires that we exercise faith in Him, who He is, and what He said in His Word. That's mandatory. Okay, so basically, that's what that verse is saying to us. Now, in verse 2, talking about faith, it says, for by it, that's faith, by it the elders obtained a good testimony. The elders here are all of the patriarchs in the Old Testament, the prophets, all of the people, and many of them are going to be listed throughout this chapter. That's the elders he's talking about. So by faith, by it, the elders, they obtained a good testimony. And if there's something that we as believers should obtain or seek to obtain, is a good testimony, Okay. Not a, not a weak testimony, a bad testimony. In other words, about the way we live, about, about what we stand for. It should be something that God looks at and says, that's good. Good and faithful servant. The day we see Jesus in heaven, what is he going to say to us? I know a lot of people say, well, when I see Jesus, he's going to give me the biggest hug. Yeah, and then he's going to usher, enter you into the joy of the Lord. But what, about, uh, what about this thing about what he says to us? Well done, good and faithful servant. Is he going to say that to everybody? I think, I don't know. Uh, but I have a feeling that some people, he's just not going to say anything. He's just going to get out of the way and let you in. he give it a hug and, you know. Then as, after you go by, I can, if I could add a little humor, you just made it, didn't you? And some people are just barely going to make it. But thank God, if they have faith in Christ, they're going to make it. But we want a good testimony. And it's important that we have a good testimony because the unbeliever is looking at us. Whether you know it or not, your neighbors are looking at you. Okay. I remember talking to somebody recently, uh, I don't know, maybe a year ago, something like that. And uh, we found out that uh, the people, you know, because I'm a pastor and I've been living in that area, in that house for over 30 years. So that's the preacher's house. That's what they called it. I didn't know that's what they called it. But that's the preacher's house. So with you, some of oh, that's, that, that's the Bible carrying uh, believers. See, we see them go in the morning carrying them Bibles. And uh, so people know who you are at work. 
people in your family, relatives, they, they know who you are. And it's important that you maintain a good testimony, okay? So I'm just sharing what a, what a good testimony is. So by it, by faith, uh, what is faith? By living in faith, trusting God no matter what. That's how you obtain a good testimony. Living in faith, believing what God, who God is, what He came to do in Christ, and, and, and what He said, His Word. By living in faith that way, trusting God no matter what. No matter if your political party got destroyed. And you felt down, and it's easy to feel down, but you got to remember, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Heaven didn't lose. That's right. Jesus didn't lose. There were some knucklehead years ago uh, out, out of one of the religious Christian groups in America that was teaching that Jesus was a failure because he went to the cross and he died. Oh. I can mention the name of some of those teachers. You'll recognize them instantly. They're some of the so-called spiritual leaders in, in, in the church world. Well-known names. And they're all rich. Millionaires. But they were teaching that because he wasn't successful. He wasn't prosperous. He died. The dummy, don't they know that's what he came to do? Because if he doesn't die, then we die. When we die, we're dead and we go to hell. No, he was successful. He, he fulfilled his assignment. He came to be the sacrificial, God's sacrificial lamb at Calvary's cross, shed his blood, paid the price for, for the sin of man. Thank you, Lord. Highly victorious. Yes. Amen. And those guys are teaching that he, was, uh, that, that he failed? Unbelievable, but they were doing it. They were doing it. And a lot of people, oh yeah, well I guess. Yeah, that's how you do it. So, they obtained, by faith, they obtained a good testimony. Okay? Now verse 3 is very interesting. It says, by faith. Somebody say, by faith. By faith. It's by faith. Okay? So far, that's, that's what he's talking, emphasizing here, especially in these three verses. By faith, we understand. We have to understand something. Okay? We have to know something concerning the Word of God. Concerning the principles of God. It's something that we understand. That by faith, uh, we understand that the worlds, okay? By, basically, I can give you the Greek word, but basically he's talking about the universe. The worlds were framed by the word of God. So the worlds, the, e, the, the, the eons, the, the ages, okay? The universe was framed, was set in order by the word of God. How come planets don't collide? How come in our solar system the planets don't collide? Or, or how come asteroids, when they come and their, their trajectory, they figure out it's going to be in the Earth, but then they get to Jupiter, and because the, the tremendous gravitational pull, its gravitational pull uh, deflects the asteroids. How does one galaxy go, uh, go through another galaxy in the way they move, and nothing collide, and yet this galaxy stays intact, and that galaxy stays intact when they pass through one another? How does all that happen? You know how it happens? Because God said so. Amen. What holds them together? God's word. God said it and everything obeys. So we understand that it was by faith that God framed the universe by his word. Woo. Well, why does that happen? Because God said so. They have no choice. Yeah, and scientists try to explain everything, you know, scientifically, and, and they can explain some of it, but there's some of it that they're saying it's impossible. That's not supposed to happen. How does it happen? Well, the answer is easy. They can just ask any child in Sunday school, because God said it. Amen. That's the power of the Word of God. God spoke the worlds into existence. How did He get framed the worlds into existence? He spoke it. Amen. His Word holds the universe together. Wow! Just yesterday I was watching, I like to watch stuff on the universe. Like scientists and people keep coming out with new stuff. And the, they talk about the known universe, which we have ways of reaching out and finding out more about, you know, uh, radio scopes and all of that that can reach further. And then they find a part of the universe they've never seen. But now some are saying that the unknown universe is many times bigger than the known universe. And the known universe is so big that it blows our minds. How does all that happen? God said so. So it says in verse 3, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. By what? By the word of God. He didn't take some dirt and throw them all out, you know, Jupiter or somebody, you know, the Greek, Greek, Greek mythology or, or one of those. No, he just spoke. We don't really know who God is. What we know about God is 
found in the pages of this book, the Bible. But we really, God is so great, so powerful that we, we can't even begin to think about what, about who he, he really is. God revealed himself to us in, in the life of Jesus. Amen. Philip said, Lord, show us God and show us the Father and it'll suffice us. He said, I think it was Philip, wasn't it? It might have been Sam or, or Joe or Henry, but they were Philip. And he said, hey, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father of God, you know, the Father holds the executive branch of the Godhead. There is a Godhead. It's made of three persons, the Son, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the Father, if you will, holds the executive branch. He is so great. Jesus even said, the Father is greater than I. I do everything the Father has told me, has shown me. The Holy Spirit doesn't speak of himself. Jesus said, when I go away, God will send the Holy Spirit, and he won't speak of himself. He'll speak whatever the Father has, God has shown him. So the Father holds the executive branch. He's so far, we don't really know who he is. He's so great. Well, if he's so great, why can't he answer my prayer? He can do anything. He can create a universe. Can you? Can you compare your need and your prayer uh, to creating the universe? Of course not. There are reasons why we go through what we go. And I don't have time. I, I would like to get into all that. But by and by, we usually touch on, on all of those areas. So we understand that the world is framed by the Word of God. So that the things which are seen, that's that universe... We're not made of things which are visible. So it wasn't made by anything visible. It was made by the word of the universe. The universe was created by the word of God. How powerful. Okay. So it's all by faith. God said it. Mark eleven twenty three 23 basically is saying that this is the way God operates. That God can have what he says. We can't. He shows us the principle, but then none of us can do it. It takes God to create. God can say, and then there, out of nowhere, out of nothing, something becomes real, becomes alive, becomes material. It's by faith. It all goes back to have, having faith in God, having faith in what God said, because that's the only thing that works. Nothing else works. God is the only one that knows how stuff works. And that's what this is telling us. So all these elders obtain a, a good report, a good testimony by just simply believing what God said and then practicing what God said, living it. Now, let's read, a, uh, I have a little bit of time. I'm just going to read a, a lot of verses here. I want to read quite a, let, let me just read the next few verses. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, Cain and Abel, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and through it, he being dead, still speaks. Remember the blood of Abel. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. And was not found because God had taken him. God raptured Enoch. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch pleased God. He had a good testimony. Okay? Uh, but without faith, this famous verse, for without faith, it is impossible to please him. Without faith, it is what? What does impossible mean? It can't happen. No way, no how can't happen. Impossible. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. I don't care how much you confess the Word of God, how much you declare the Word of God, how much you think you know the Word of God. If you don't have faith, you cannot please God. Impossible. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. How does he reward those that diligently seek him? By extending to them eternal life. Amen. Jesus. You must come to Jesus and believe who he is, what he came to do, and believe what he did at Calvary's cross. And he rewards you with everlasting eternal life. For God, uh, John 3.16, that whoever believes him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what he's talking about here. And then he says, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, that's awe, godly fear and awe, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness 
which is according to faith. So all of these patriarchs, all of these elders, they obtained a good testimony and a good report huh? by faith. They believed what God said. They believed His word no matter what. And man, did they have challenges. You think you have challenges. These guys had big, big challenges. Then he continues in verse 8, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. That would be what we call the land of Canaan, the promised land. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents. He was a nomad with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he, want, he waited for the city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. He waited for heaven. By faith Sarah, his wife herself, also received strength to conceive seed, to become pregnant, and she bore a child when she was past the age, yeah, about 90, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, him as good as dead physically, okay, to have children, 